I'm the ex-fiance, if you want to call it that, of Stephen Avery. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you believe Stephen Avery killed Teresa Halbach? Yes, I do. Why? Because he threatened to kill me and my family and a friend of mine. What did he, how did he threaten you? I was in a bath and he threatened to throw a blow dryer in there and he told me that he'd be able to get away with it. What was the reason? He's sick. What was your relationship like with him? Not good. Abusive. What kinds of things would he do to you? He'd beat me all the time, uh, punch me, throw me against the wall. I'd try to leave. He uh, smashed the windshield out of my car so I couldn't leave him. I was at work one day, and he was up there spying through a window. I got in the car after work. I knew nothing about it, and he just started slapping me and got back to the jail. They told me I wouldn't be working anymore, so I couldn't see him because they noticed the red marks on my face. How long were you in a relationship with him? Two years. Just about two years. Was it like that the whole time? After the first week. So why did you stay? I couldn't leave. I had what? nowhere to go. How did the two of you meet in the first place? I was staying out at Roley Johnson's trailer to take care of it. And I was outside working on my car, fixing the headlights. And him and his nephew come over and asked if I needed help. I told him no. And I asked him, you want a drink? Because at the time I was still drinking. They came in and I had a few drinks with his nephew. Next thing I know, he moved in the next day. And I couldn't get rid of him. Were there some good times? Maybe two. Did you ever report any of the abuse? Yes, I did. What did you report? <clears throat> he choked me one night and, well, actually he started hitting me, so I called the police and then he choked me and was dragging me out the door so we could leave before the police got there. And we were driving down the road and the police that were on the way pulled over, took me out of the car and asked me what was going on. And I told them and they arrested him. Have you seen the documentary? No, I haven't. Why not? Don't want to. I asked Lori and Moira not to even use anything with me in it. And Lori and Myra are the filmmakers? Yes. Why didn't you want to be in it? Because I told her it was all lies. I told her, she called me and asked me if I wanted to do another interview before the documentary came out, and I told her no. And that's when I asked her, I want nothing to do with it. I don't want any part of it, and I don't want to be in it. I said, it's all lies, because Stephen called me and told me it should be all on police phone records that if I didn't say anything good and nice about him, I'd pay. What did you interpret that to be? He beat me. When you say it was all lies, what do you mean? What was a lie? Me talking nice about him and how good he was. What did they say to you when you asked not to be in it? I don't even remember. That was... Quite a while ago. Well, since you haven't seen it, the documentary, we see the two of you holding hands. We see you smiling. We see you defending Stephen. So for someone who 
is now hearing what you're saying, that he was abusive towards you. How do you explain what they see in the documentary? It was all an act. I, I, he told me how to act. You know, he said, smile, be happy. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to get hurt. There's one scene <laughs> where you say, you called Stephen at 536, supposedly when all this murder, whatever was supposedly happening, and you talked for 15 minutes. And the conversation was normal. He didn't sound rushed or like he was doing anything. If he was in the middle of doing something, we wouldn't have talked for 15 minutes. True? Repeat that. So you said, I called Stephen at 556, supposedly when all of this murder, whatever was supposedly happening. And we talked for 15 minutes. And the conversation was normal. He didn't sound rushed or like he was doing anything. If he was in the middle of doing something, we wouldn't have talked for 15 minutes. Is that true? I believe so. I, I don't remember. That was, what, eight years ago? Nine years ago? Mm -hmm. I, I remember saying that, yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Do you still believe that, though? No. Why not? Because he did sound funny. I mean, he didn't sound rushed or whatever, but he did sound funny, like he was lying or hiding something. Did you ever ask him straight out if he killed Teresa? Yeah. What did he say? No. Did you ask him more than once? Oh, yeah. And he always said no. Did you believe him then? No. Why? Because of the way I know he is. Capable of murder. Yeah. Hurting people. If he doesn't. He told me once. Excuse my language. All bitches owe him. Because of the one that sent him to prison the first time. We all owed him. And he could do whatever he wanted. Okay, there's another one from the documentary, since you haven't seen it. <clears throat> Two weeks before I was released from jail, investigators were going to bring in pictures to show me, of, to show me Teresa's body and how it was burnt and still muscle tissues on the bones. There was a lot of pressure they were putting on me to turn against Stephen. Were police putting a lot of pressure on you? No, they just wanted to get to the truth. Did you ever tell them that you thought that he killed Teresa? I don't believe I did. Not until after I moved out of Manitowoc. Why not? Because I thought he would have a chance of getting the bail money and getting out before the trial and I was still out at the Avery yard mm -hmm. and if he got out he'd be there too who knows what he would have done to me what about the family at the Avery yard are they from what you saw did they believe and support Stephen too yeah they did all of them The brothers, I believe, at first thought he did it, but then they came around and are saying that he's innocent. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't talk to him. Okay, there's one more I want to read you. Um, this is from, there was an interrogation that you did, I think after you and Steven crossed paths and you guys weren't supposed to be having contact with one another and law enforcement brought you in. Um, so the police said, I've been doing this a long time. I've met a lot of interesting people, a lot of people similar to Steve, but I've never met somebody as cold-blooded as him. To think what he did to that girl, 
think about that for a minute. A minute. Think about her family. And you said, oh, I do all the time. The police said, I hope you do be because for sticking up for him, what does that make you look like? And you said, well, I know, but please say, I killed her, and then you shrug. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Mm -mm. But do you remember, you never told police, you said, that you thought he killed Teresa? Not at first, no. Um, the police go on to say he killed her. He's the only one that sees her during that time frame. He's the last one to see her. Think about that. She just disappears. She disappears because he killed her. That's the kind of person you want to spend the rest of your life with. And then after that, according to uh, Barb, who's Stephen's sister, she said Jody put in a request to stop talking to investigators anymore, and three days later they went after Brendan. Yep, I remember that. Why did you want to stop talking to investigators? Because it was hard. Being in jail, everybody's looking at me, and I had a lot of guilt because the day this happened, Stephen was supposed to pick me up to go to an AODA class. What's that? A drinking class okay but for some reason which I still don't know the jail wouldn't let me out and if they would have let me out she'd still be alive cuz I would have been there what do you think you could have done to stop it Do you think about that a lot? Oh, I went through four months of intense counseling because of my guilt. And they kept telling me, I have nothing to be guilty about. It's not your fault. But if I would have been there, I still feel she'd be alive. Had you ever heard Teresa Halbach's name before? No. Nope. Did you know that people had been coming to take pictures of cars from Auto Trader? No. Nope. So he never mentioned that anyone was coming that day? No. Nope. So even though at the time you felt like he did it. If you could say anything to Teresa's family, what would you say? I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Sorry for their loss. Did his attorneys ever talk to you? As in, did they um, try to find out yeah. anything about what your relationship was like, or? I don't even remember. What about the prosecution? I know they, they're the ones that <clears throat> subpoenaed me for court. I remember that. Were you supposed to be a witness? I was going to testify against Stephen. What were you supposed to talk about? I don't know. They, we never went over that because they never ended up using me. But they had interviewed <laughs> you before the trial? Yeah, I believe they did. I, I don't remember. I try to block all that out. Mm -hmm hard yeah what do you think about Brendan I believe he's innocent 
Why do you think Brendan's innocent but not Stephen? I believe Stephen threatened Brendan to do it. If Brendan didn't do what Stephen said, he hurt him. Hurt him how? Probably end up killing him too. Had you seen Stephen do that to any family members before? Not personally, no. But Stephen's one person I don't trust. He's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So on one side you get what? <clears throat> A nice person or semi-nice person. And then behind closed doors, he's a monster. Have you had contact with him since you left Manitowoc? No. Why not? Don't want to. Why well, nothing to do with him? But he's contacted you? Yes. How? Through letters. He tried calling me. Once or twice, sent me four letters. What did they say? I never read them. I read one of them, the recent one he sent in, I think, September. Threatening me for money if I don't pay him. <clears throat> he was going to call Fond du Lac Police Department, Appleton Police Department, Tell him I'm drinking and driving and driving without a license and I have a license, I have a legal car, a legal good license should I say. I've moved on with my life and I'm doing good. So after all this time, it's been 10 years about, why are you talking to me? What, did you, what do you want people to know? The truth. Which is? What a monster he is. And he's not innocent. So there's a lot of evidence in the case <laughs> on both sides. One of them, one side would say there's a lack of evidence, and the other side would say there's a ton of evidence that proves that he's guilty. But on the defense side, the version of events that they gave to how Teresa died it seems like there would have been more blood than what there was found. So how would you explain all of that if he did it? I don't know. All I know that they did find blood, but it was my blood in the trailer. How they didn't find any of hers I don't know. You don't believe this story that Manitowoc could have set him up? No. Did you ever see any evidence of there being a strained or bad relationship between Stephen and the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department? I never really seen them interact together or seen them together. I want to go back to talking about the abuse. Did you tell the filmmakers about how you were being treated? No. Why not? Because Stephen asked, told me to make him look good. And if you didn't make him look good, what would happen? I'd pay for it. How? Knowing him, he'd beat me. He told me once if I did leave him that uh, he'd burn down my mom's house with them and my daughter in it. You believed him? Yeah. Had you seen him act violently toward other people? No. Just you? No. There was, um, you mentioned this police report from, there's a couple of them. So there was one while you were still an inmate and he was threatening you? 
was showing up at your work and threatening oh, you? Oh, yes. What happened? <clears throat> well, one day, <clears throat> he was there at break time, and I went out there on break and was sitting in the car, and he started yelling at me because all these guys are out there. Well, which one are you talking to? I was I'm talking to any. So I got out of the car, and he got out of the car and started yelling at me, and the guys that I worked with started walking towards the car, and he told them to get away or he's going to come back and shoot them. And then he'd sit and spy through the windows to see if I was talking to anybody. Or I went to the racetrack once <clears throat> to meet my mom and dad, and he's across the street with binoculars spying on me. It's not right. One of my girlfriends called <clears throat> Sorry. his cell phone trying to get a hold of me. And he told her, if you ever call again, I'm going to come down there and kill you. It's not something you say if you're a normal person. Did you ever have bruises from him? Yes. Did, he? Did you show people? My, at the time, probation officer, when I first got on probation, I had a black eye and it's the law that you got to take pictures, so she has pictures. I believe the family saw them, mm -hmm. but they just ignored it. What did you observe the dynamic <clears throat> to be in the Avery household family? Dysfunctional? That could be a lot of families. <laughs> True. <laughs> how would you it's... dysfunctional how? I don't I don't know how to answer that. Just... I can't answer that. I I'd, I'd have to think about that one. Okay. Were you in love with Stephen Avery? No. But you stayed for two <clears throat> years. I ate two boxes of rat poison just so I could go to the hospital and get away from him and ask them to get the police to help me. We didn't have a phone. He ripped that out of the wall. You couldn't have gone to your family? No, I didn't want to involve them. There's another police report, and I think you kind of talked about this one. <clears throat> so you said that he um, choked you. Let me see. I'm trying to find it. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, he pushed you in the chest area. You hit your head. He started hitting you. You crawled up into a ball. He said he was going to kill you. Um, you called 911. He ripped the phone out of the wall. He began choking you until you lost consciousness. He was dragging you to, when you came to, he was dragging you to his vehicle. Where you, and then you guys were eventually stopped by an officer. He says none of that ever happened. Well, of course he's going to say that. He wants to look good. But the police report also says that there was no physical evidence that, the, that you were physically assaulted. There were no marks around your neck. Um, that would support the choking claim. Dad, I don't know. I didn't look at my neck. <clears throat> did you go to, did you get treated for anything? Not at that time, no. No, I went back to the trailer and sat there. Were you two separated? Yeah. They arrested him at that time, so he went to jail. Okay. Okay. 
Let me find my notes. Sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. I would ask you why you changed your mind about Stephen's guilt, but from what you say, you always felt like he was guilty. Yeah. As soon as I saw it on TV, because I was in jail at the time, mm -hmm. just something in my gut told me he's guilty. And when you got out, he was in jail. Yeah. Did you, were you worried though, if you would have gotten out and he was still out, this is somebody who you believe committed a murder? Oh yeah. And you were still going to be with him? No. I would have talked to my PO at the time and they probably would have moved me. Okay. Um, there were some court documents that we came across um, that said because since you haven't seen the documentary um, Stephen points the finger at his brothers for possibly being why do you smirk? Because that's something he would do to get the blame off of him. Why do you think that Stephen would be more guilty than his brothers? Just knowing how Stephen is. It's different than them? Yeah. Okay. Well, the document says um, <clears throat> Charles Avery has had a history of assault against women, including clients who visited the Avery Salvage Yard. And it says, Charles had a reason to, quote, frame Stephen over money, a share of the family business, and over Jody Stokowski, <laughs> Stephen's former girlfriend. Why would it say that? Stephen always thought me and Charles, Chuck, mm -hmm. had something going on. I wasn't even allowed to talk to him. So a man who is going to become your brother-in-law, you were not allowed to talk to him. Yeah. Why not? Because Stephen was jealous. Of his brother? Yeah. What about his brother made him jealous? I don't know. I never asked him. I just did what I was told. What eventually drove you away from Stephen? As in leaving the yard? Mm -hmm. It's my belief. I never asked because I was just happy to be away from there. We were put on a no contact after phone calls that were made that my PO heard of him talking to his mom something about me. I don't know. I don't care. We were put on a no contact for that. And then one day he called and asked for the camera. Well, camera's in police custody. I don't have it. She had some officers come to the house and arrest me because it was third-party contact. There's no contact at all. So I went to jail. We talked. And... She said it would be in my best interest if I left. If I stayed, I'd keep getting in trouble. Well, I ain't getting in trouble for him. So I moved. And didn't look back. Exactly. I, didn't, I took one duffel bag of clothes. The rest was left there, and they burnt it. My daughter's baby book, her clothes, my china set. Everything I owned, they burned. So you have to know that whether it be people who saw the documentary or possibly the Averys are going to be listening to you today saying that you're lying. 
why should they believe you? Because deep down they know the truth. They've seen me with fat lips. They've seen the bruises. But they also think he's innocent and want him out. So yeah, that's something I'm ready to deal with that they're going to be calling me a liar. One day at a time. And what about law enforcement? <clears throat> um, at one point in the documentary, you did say that they were being hard on you. Were you ever offered anything? No. You were never offered something in exchange to give information about Stephen? Nope. And what about the filmmakers? Did they give you direction to make Stephen look good? No. Do you think they knew about the abuse that was taking place? May I? That's hard to answer because a lot of the times the questions they had were hard for me to answer. I don't know. What kinds of questions would they ask? Well, if he was a good guy and... It's almost like the questions, well, not that you're asking, but... God, that was so long ago, it just... That, it's... I don't know. 